Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. I've talked a little bit about right to repair on this channel, and it's the movement to get to where someone can buy a product, and if the product breaks, that they can fix it themselves or have someone else fix it for them without having to go to the dealership of the manufacturer or going directly to the manufacturer. And this is a problem in some industries, and, and most famously, it's in the farming industry. You buy a big piece of farming equipment made by one of the big manufacturers, and it costs hundreds of thousands of dollars, and you're using it, it breaks down. Uh, and they say, oh, it broke down, you gotta bring it back to one of our dealers or have one of our dealers send someone out, but you cannot have an independent person work on this, and you, of course, cannot work on it yourself. And one of the ways that they keep that happening is that they make sure that there's all kinds of proprietary things inside that tractor or whatever it is that you have that only they can work on with specialized tools or specialized programming or something like that. And so this move has been going on now for a few years. Uh, Lewis Rossman of New York uh, has been at the forefront of this, and I salute him. In fact, I've been on his show talking about this, but that was a little while ago. Uh, and so we got good news here, and this is from the uh, Daily Sentinel out of Grand Junction. Colorado becomes first state to pass right to repair for farmers. The governor of Colorado has signed legislation forcing manufacturers to provide the necessary manuals, tools, parts, and software so farmers can fix their own machines if they want to. Jesse Bedane wrote this, and they talk about how the governor is sitting in front of a big red tractor when he signed a bill making Colorado the first state to ensure that farmers can fix their own tractors and combines with a right to repair law, which compels manufacturers to provide the necessary manuals, tools, parts, and software. Colorado, of course, is home to high desert ranches and sweeping farms on the low and level plains, and they took the lead on the issue following a nationwide outcry from farmers that manufacturers have blocked them from making fixes and forced them to wait precious days for an official servicer to arrive, which often imperiled their crops and their profits. So think about this. You've got this big old machine. You count on it. It breaks down. You could call an independent repair guy to fix it. You could try to fix it yourself, but you can't do either of those because of how it's built. You got to call the dealership and the dealership says, yeah, we'll get to it when we get to it. And if you've ever dealt with farmers, you know that what are they, you know, a lot of what they do is extremely time sensitive. And so if they're halfway through harvesting their crop and they're told, oh, we'll get to you in a couple weeks, uh, that might ruin the entire season or a big part of it. While they're increasingly high-tech tractors or combines sit unused, a hailstorm could wipe out their crop or a farmer could miss the ideal planting window, according to farmers. Farmers have had to wait three or four weeks just to get repairs done to equipment when they could do the repairs themselves, which is unfathomable, says uh, Bill Midcap, whose son is a fifth-generation rancher on Colorado's eastern plains. Lawmakers in at least 10 other states have introduced similar legislation, including Florida, Maryland, Missouri, New Jersey, Texas, and Vermont. But you should know that the companies are lobbying hard against us. So... When it comes to who's got the most uh, pull in your state capital, quite often it's big business. And so I'm not confident that all these bills will pass. But as we know, when one passes, other states will look to it and go, oh, they did it. Let's see what happens there. So Colorado's taking the lead. Meanwhile, the representative who sponsored the bill and the director of the Rocky Mountain Farmers Union said it's a potential launch pad for other states and even at the federal level where discussions about similar legislation are already underway. The legislation advanced through long committee hearings, having been propelled forward mostly by uh, legislators uh, who back this, uh, and uh, they did get people from both sides of the aisle to co-sponsor the bill. The proposal did leave some lawmakers stuck between their farming constituents pleading for the ability to do this, and the manufacturers who are vehemently opposed, vehemently opposed, manufacturers and dealerships raise concerns that providing tools and information to farmers would allow equipment owners to illegally crank up the horsepower and bypass emission controls, putting operator safety and the environment at risk. So they're saying that if we let them repair their own machines, they'll obviously hot rod them and break the law. Well, it's not your job to enforce that law, is it? 
That's kind of like saying, well, you know, we sell you a car with a catalytic converter on it, but we won't let you touch the exhaust because you might try to remove that catalytic converter. Huh? Opponents also worried that compelling companies to share some detailed information could expose proprietary information, forcing a business to disclose trade secrets, software, and jeopardize consumer safety is poor public policy, said one rep, adding that it will stifle tech innovation. Um, Manufacturer John Deere did not immediately respond to a request for comment, but they're often one of the companies people point to as opposing this concept. At the signing ceremony Tuesday, under a light drizzle of rain, the governor said this bill will save farmers and ranchers time and money and support the free market in repair before exclaiming, first in the nation. Behind the governor uh, and arrayed farmers and lawmakers sat a red Steiger 370 tractor owned by a farmer named Danny Wood. Uh, Wood's tractor has flown an American flag reading Farmers First, and it is one of his, two of his machines that broke down, requiring long waits before servicers arrived to enter a few lines of computer code or to make a fix that he could have done himself if he'd been allowed to do so without like voiding the warranty or something. Uh, meanwhile, people climbed inside the tractor for a photo op. Uh, the bill's proponents acknowledged that the legislation could make it easier for operators to modify horsepower and emissions controls, but they argued that farmers are already able to tinker with their machines. Uh, and, of course, if they were to break the law, it would still be illegal. No one is saying that you're allowed to modify it in a legal fashion. Uh, the law falls into the broader right to repair campaign, which has picked up steam across the country. It applies to a wide range of products, from iPhones to hospital ventilators. Independent mechanics and car owners have access to tools and parts because of a 2014 Memorandum of Understanding signed by the automotive industry. And as you can imagine, your car, if it's relatively recent, has got all kinds of black boxes and computers and control modules underneath the hood. And the manufacturers at one point in time said, oh, all that's proprietary. You're not allowed to touch that stuff. You, you, can't, you can't read that stuff if you buy one of them onboard diagnostic. No, 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 you can't use that. You, no, 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 that's, that's for us. You'd never be able to understand that. Uh, meanwhile, the president has directed the Federal Trade Commission to beef up its right to repair enforcement. And when I was on Lewis Rossman's show talking about this, I pointed out that uh, the spirit of right to repair has been on the books for quite some time in the Magnus and Moss Warranty Act. And so... The idea that you own something and you can do with it as you wish uh, makes a lot of sense to most people. Uh, but there were times when the manufacturers would say, not only can you not repair that thing you have, but you have to use our parts if you're going to replace parts on it, such as oil filters, air filters, fan belts, and things of that nature. So that if you were to use a non-General Motors fan belt, well, that, gee, that's that. Ooh. And you had, you had a transmission failure? We may have to take a look at your warranty because you're using non-GM parts. And so the car companies a long time ago gave up on that. But it was partly because of a federal statute called the Magnus and Moss Warranty Act. And so simply extending that into other fields is not that big of a stretch. It's been a huge lobbying effort by the big tractor manufacturers to keep this from happening for farmers. But this gets you down to the other things such as, oh, I don't know, iPhones or iPads. And so, for instance, I have, as many of you know, sitting on the desk right here, I have an iPad that I use during the show as a stopwatch. And if the battery were to go bad in that, which I'm pretty sure it has, <laughs> um, it's unclear if I can replace or repair that battery uh, without using an official, you know, Apple uh, vendor to do that. But why? You know, I replace batteries and all kinds of other things all the time. And the argument always is, is like, well, no, see, if you, if you go in there and replace a battery, you might break it. So what? It's mine. I'm, I'm allowed to break it. <laughs> One of the things I can do if I own it. And so a lot of their arguments fall apart very quickly. And the one about, oh, well, if we let you do these things, you're going to break the law by modifying, well, there's already a law there. It's not your job to enforce that law. So the, uh, the, the bigger question is if it you know, requires diagnostic tools that are unique to that manufacturer. Well, just sell the diagnostic tools. Um, that's what other companies have done. 
So this is pretty cool. This is pretty cool with Colorado passing the first right to repair law, which appears to be primarily aimed at farmers. So I don't know if it helps people who own iPhones just yet in Colorado, but I suspect that the pendulum is swinging in the correct direction. And that's the key. As more people hear about this, especially farmers in other states, are going to go, wait a second. Colorado's got that, but Michigan doesn't. And I've also mentioned before, I used to work in a little town called Bad Axe, Michigan. And prior to that, I lived in the city. I was a city boy. And I, and I moved out to Bad Axe, Michigan, which is out in farm country, uh, up in the thumb of Michigan, up here. And I remember driving to a radio station for the first time for an interview, going past just wide open fields, which I realized come the spring and summer, we're going to be yay high in corn and other things. And um, I learned a lot about the farming industry that I didn't really know. And one of the things that surprised me was how expensive farm equipment is. Because, you know, if you watch Green Acres and you, and you watch <laughs> the Hoyt Clagwell tractor that Oliver has, uh, that is an antique. And if you see what these guys and gals are using on their farms today, you understand that much of the equipment they're using is extremely expensive, extremely complicated, and they are often in huge debt just to keep their operations running. So a lot of farmers will actually have a huge debt load they're carrying, and it's all contingent on them having one good year this year to fix a lot of that. And if they have a bad year because their tractor broke down, ironically, their tractor is one of the things that caused that big debt. So it's just, it's just crazy. And if you don't believe me, uh, next time you're on the edge of a town, your farm country, and you see a tractor dealer, pull in, get out, and walk around like you're looking at cars but looking at tractors. And look at the price tags, but also look at how cool those things are. I mean, they are, they are space age. I mean, they really are. They really are. And so they can also be very, very expensive. And as you can imagine, cost a fortune to fix. So here we go. Colorado becomes the first state to pass right to repair for farmers. A lot of people sent that to me. Thank you very much. Questions or comments, as always, put them below. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. It does not matter how slowly you go as long as you do not stop.